Hello people of the internet, I hope everyone is having a fun and safe Halloween season. I'm sharing this story in order to serve as a warning. There was an incident a few years ago and I'm worried someone might try something similar. I'm a deputy for a small town in Texas that's close to one of the major cities. I can't be more specific than that, you'll understand why in a bit. I begin my tale from the point of view from one of the victims as they told it to me. Daisy and a few of her sorority friends from the city decided to go to a haunted theme park that had been set up at the edge of the town. It was one of those seasonal pop-up things like a traveling circus. Some traveling performers set up a bunch of trailers and tents with various games and horror attractions. Keep in mind, this was pre-COVID. That's why I'm sharing this story now. With the restrictions being lifted and people starved for entertainment, this is the perfect time for criminals to strike. Daisy and her friends decided to try out the escape room attraction. You know, one of those they lock you in a room and you have to find and solve all the puzzles before the time is up kind of deals. It was set up in the back of one of those long haul trucks with a double trailer. The attraction runners managed to squeeze in three puzzle rooms per trailer. Each room could fit three or four people. As they went in, Daisy noticed her phone suddenly just lost signal. One of the workers explained there was a cell phone jammer in place to prevent cheating. She thought nothing of it at the time. She and her buddies entered the trailer and that's when the nightmare began. Now I'll tell you when I come in. Daisy's family lives next to me. I know them quite well. Daisy's parents were out of town visiting family, and that evening, when Daisy was several hours late getting home, her little brother, I'll call him Jimmy, came and asked me for help. Daisy was taking care of Jimmy while their parents were gone. We tried Daisy's cell phone, but the calls wouldn't go through. I had heard about Daisy's plans to go out with her friends, so naturally, I just assumed she had lost track of time. Still, little Jimmy seemed really scared and pleaded for my help. I agreed to look for his sister while Jimmy stayed with my wife. Turned out it was a damn good thing the kid convinced me. I had just got off shift so I didn't bother changing out of my uniform. My house is so close to the edge of town where the theme park had been set up so it didn't take me too long to get there. I eventually got to the escape room attraction and I remember I was sitting at the entrance explaining who I was looking for. The staff were denying having seen Daisy but their shifty gazes told me that they knew something. I wish I could say something cool or dramatic happened but that's not how it works in the real world. I was suspicious enough I called in backup and demanded to search the escape rooms. Turns out it was the grown up version of the guy with the windowless van giving away candy trick. The cartels to the south had expanded into the sex slave trade and cute sorority girls came up for upwards of 10 grand a piece. The guys at the entrance were screening the groups making sure to only let in groups of young females. We discovered this hadn't been the first year they had done something like this. The investigation is still ongoing so please remember to be safe out there. Fucking Florida, I swear, every Florida man joke ever spoken has either happened or is just waiting for its moments. My story started a few years back. I live in a small town in, well, you probably guess, Florida. Before the incident, every year there was a Halloween attraction, the Harper Haunted Pumpkin Patch. Thinking about now, that whole place always had that weird smell. The Harpers always said it was just fertilizer and other farm supplies. The Haunted Pumpkin Patch was an annual tradition of the Harper family. They owned a farm near town. Every October after the final harvest, they would turn one of their fields and some of the woods surrounding their property into a maze slash trick or treat attraction. It wasn't anything overly grand, mostly just a bunch of temporary walls set up in a field. It wasn't even really a maze. By design, any child would be able to navigate their way through it easily. Any turn that led to a dead end was either visible from the junction or there were errors or some other hints that pointed which way to go. The idea was that there were volunteers in costumes giving away candy in various parts of the maze so it was like a game. It was a popular attraction for families and teenagers and for the teens I had assumed it was just the free candy but it turns out that there were more than sweets hidden in that maze. When the incident occurred, I was visiting the haunted pumpkin patch with my girlfriend. She lived in another town and heard about the Harper tradition and she asked me to take her. We went through the maze taking whatever candies appealed to us. There was a lot of noise from all the kids and the music so we really couldn't talk all that much. I got the sense that the maze hadn't met my date's expectations. 
We got a little bored and at one point she noticed a turnoff that didn't immediately lead to a dead end like all the others. There was an arrow pointing the way to go, but the other path seemed to lead off into the woods. We decided to go exploring. Maybe there was some sort of super secret candy bowl with full size candy bars or something special like that for those that were willing to venture off the beaten path. The path eventually led to a sort of shack in the woods well away from the farm. It was decorated with a scary clown theme and there was a sign that read, turn back now or the clowns will get you. No bowls of candy though. It was odd that the Harpers would go through the effort of building the maze to lead to the spot and not do something with it. My date suggested that we go back into the shack to find the reward. So we found a window and peered in and well, I shit you not, we found people dress up as clowns making meth. Clowns cooking meth in the woods only in freaking Florida. I don't know much about chemistry, but I've seen enough episodes of Breaking Bad to have a reasonable idea of what a meth lab looks like. Turns out that the Harpers had been dealing meth for years. The whole haunted pumpkin patch thing was just a way of selling that the cops wouldn't notice. After all, people come and go out of the mazes at their own pace. The smell of the farm would help to mask the smell of the lab and no one would suspect anyone of selling drugs at a family attraction. My date and I snapped a few pictures with our cell phones and then we decided to contact the authorities. All in all though, not a bad second date. I have a cautionary tale for you all. It's about imposters. I'm a university student and a buddy of mine decided to host what he called a Tinder Halloween party. The idea was we would set up dates with partners we had matched with but hadn't met in person yet couples would arrange to wear matching costumes. For example, I was my favorite version of the doctor. Number 11, Matt Smith. My date came dressed up as River Song. For those not familiar with Doctor Who, they're characters on a sci-fi fantasy wibbly wobbly time travel TV show. I remember when my buddy first told me about this idea. I'll call him Ape because his costume was King Kong, and I'll call his date Anne because her costume was Anne Darrow, the woman that gets taken by King Kong during the climax of the movie. His pitch went something like this. Yeah, I've been chatting with Anne for a few days. We're getting along really well. I want to meet her, but she's kind of nervous about meeting me. Her last boyfriend turned out to be a controlling psycho. It got so bad that she had to get a restraining order. So here's my idea. We invite a bunch of people, all of whom are just meeting for the first time to a Halloween party. She'll feel safer in the crowd and there will be less pressure because it'll be a new experience for everyone. I ended up really liking the idea and we managed to find a few more friends to join in. It was me, Ape, three of our buddies and our dates making 10 people total. We made the arrangements and a few days later, we were at the party. Things started slow, but once everyone had a few beers, the party was actually getting started. The music was banging, there were a lot of girls in sexy costumes, my date especially. At one point, we wandered through the apartment, admiring everyone else's costume. It was at a point in the evening when couples had broken off in order to socialize with others. Gomez Adams, King Kong, and Mario were playing beer pong. Adeline and Jasmine were bopping for apples, and the poor street rat accidentally dropped his fez into the blankets. Morticia Adams and Princess Peach were getting some air on the balcony, and I spotted my buddy Ape leading his date away from the rest of the group, no doubt with romantic intentions. I remember I was trying to think of a good flirty joke about the size of my sonic screwdriver. Keep in mind, I had a few drinks when I realized something was off. I couldn't quite put my thumb on it though. My date noticed my odd expression and asked what was wrong. I looked around the party again and I counted aloud. Gomez, Ape, Mario, three. Aladdin and Jasmine make five. Morticia and Peach make seven. My buddy just took his date to the back room, that's nine. And my date giggled and added, I'm number 10. With a growing sense of dread, I replied, and I'm number 11. At first, my date laughed, but then got a confused look as we both realized there were two King Kongs. I called my buddy Ape by name, and the King Kong playing beer pong turned to me. Without hesitation, I took off running for the faker, and my date followed. We spotted the other Kong carrying an unconscious Anne out the back door. I told my date to call campus security as I chased him. Boy, I wish I could have stayed to hear her explain to them that King Kong was escaping with a woman. I chased the faker down and he was forced to drop Anne in order to escape. When I got to her, she was out cold. Turns out fake King Khan was her psycho ex. 
back when they were still dating, he had cloned her SIM card and was able to read all of her text messages. During the party, he somehow managed to slip in and give her a spiked drink. Things worked out in the end, and Anne was fine, and her ex was later arrested. Security footage caught him changing into the costume. The moral of the story is never accept a drink at a party from someone whose face you can't see. You never know who they might actually be.